Hello everybody and welcome to a video I have been wanting to shoot for years, for two reasons. One is we get to meet the lovely Kelly Harris Hi. of KDS Caltech, who as anyone who's sort of been on this planet frankly knows about Kelly, um, and we've just spent the morning, we've, spent, we've gone through three and a quarter hours. No, not a surprise, me and you. <laughs> it's non-stop, <laughs> and I've learned an oodle, an oodle about everything, really. Um, so what we're going to do is, we're going to do four videos today, and we're going to line them all up. And the first one, I want to know about you, I want to know about your background, and we're going to go into that side of things. The next one is we're going to talk about the industry and about industry trends, where it's come from, because you are one yeah. of the few who've got experience of when it was sort of nascent, um, and to now, where we're in a, in a kind of a mature industry, as it's been said. And then we're going to do a special video on the Lake Country tools. Yeah, that's LC Power Tools. Yeah. LC Power Tools. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, UDOS. And as any magazine reader will know, we regularly are putting a sort of an update on the UDOS. When it first came out, I put a big photo and that's going to be really exciting. I'm sure we'll get one next issue. And uh, it didn't happen because it's under development. And then the next issue. Four issues. It's here now. It's here. Four issues. We've got it. And I've touched it. I've actually <laughs> touched it. I put my finger behind the backing plate and it felt good. A bit greasy. Um, so we've got that side of things. And then also another really exciting topic uh, for anyone, particularly in the UK, is what Kelly's going to be doing with Lake Country for the UK, in the UK, for UK detailers, enthusiasts and professionals. Um, and the environment we're here, we're named Gillingham down in Kent. Um, and Kelly, you've been here for a long, long time already. Uh, this actual building, my, since I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as, as it developed, but yeah, yeah, 13 years I've been here. 13 okay. years as KDS, that is. 13 okay. years as KDS Skilltech. So let's kick off, and the topic is you. Thanks. How did you get into detailing? It's actually, um, I used to think I was a unique individual, mm -hmm. and there's a unique story. The more people I've met, it's actually not a unique story at all. It's very common to all of us in the trade. Primarily a car geek, mm -hmm. you know, from being a kid with Matchbox cars and Lego and Meccano. Yeah. I think most people have done that at some point, that I loved touching the me mechanical and cars and paint. And then just riding my BMX as a kid and wanted to make it the shiniest BMX. And I never <laughs> liked it dirty and then my mountain bike. And, and I thought I was literally unusual and yeah. odd and unique and eccentric maybe. And school friends kept telling me I was. And then through college, university, it was always, always the same. I'm weird. I thought I was weird. So what did you study at university? It can't be as weird as what I studied. Well, I'm, I'm engineering background, so mine's all mechanical science and mechanical engineering. So it'd be early on, it was fabrication, welding, CNC machining, grinding, then it would be CNC machinery and sort of that sort of thing. So it's always been engineering background for a, a, a global so company. Useful technical stuff. Right? Hands on. Hands yeah. on. Yeah, all hands on. Medical um, history. And obviously, all my family are all car background. It's literally every single one of my fa family, my grandparents, my step parents are all car, it's called car related. I'm not sure that's actually affected me to be that way. I was going to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I started waxing and cleaning my cars before. I actually had a car before I had a driving license, which is quite mm -hmm. a common theme. But yeah. back 30 years ago, it wasn't. So. Well, they're much easier to steal than those days. <laughs> Very. <laughs> but um, so I had a car before I had learned to drive. And then so I spent all weekend outside cleaning, polishing it, and I've been. Mm -hmm. It would be Halfords, obviously, at the time. I'd be yep. going down Halfords and buying whatever that was, and it would probably be auto glim back then, or it's yep. like super resin polish, you know. It's what was it before it was super resin polish? Silicon resin silicon polish. Resin yeah, polish. so they so changed the name to a super because the silicon was a bad term, but it's really not changed much. No? It's, it's just people don't like certain names. So, um, and then I was just polishing and cleaning my car, and you've got the usual people walking past saying, no, oh, you're going to wear the paint away, and what your usual thing, your neighbours. And um, obviously, I was a pass my test. I was always looking after my car, and my friend started saying, would you do mine, yeah. or show me? And it was just a hobby for probably about 15 years, but the hobby grew and it got actually almost a full-time job. <laughs> but I actually worked in an, an industry of engineering, research and development engineering, for vehicles, but nothing to do with detailing, so mm -hmm. it was a part-time hobby job. And I ended up doing two jobs for probably 10 years, which is stupid now in my body and how worn yeah. out I am, and I should have made the leap earlier, but I had so many people saying to me, it's not a job, detailing yeah. as it was then is not a real job, you won't make money from it, 
you're an idiot, you're a fool, you've got a proper job. Oh, I got that quite a lot too. Did you? I mean, it was just my doctor and my teachers, my yeah. parents. It, yeah, well, yeah. my own mother has told me to don't do this, and then I started to stop, because it's wrong. Yeah. It's not recognised as a trade, which is really odd. Well, it's kind of up to the likes of you and me to try and adjust of course. in time, but um, we'll come on to that. Yeah, and so then I was doing lots of cars for favours, and it might be electrician might do some wiring in my first house and I did his car and vice versa. Yeah, it's very tax efficient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, so that's how it grew. And then um, it was interesting because I still remember this very vividly. I was um, currently about to start leasing this building we're sitting in now and I was doing more mechanical. My majority of the staple of my trade was mechanical modifying and a bit specialist. Mm -hmm. But I loved polishing and paint and detailing. So I might have got like five cars a year compared to 500 or 250, 500 cars mechanical, I'd only get five years of detail. But everyone would walk in and go, wow, what's that? What's happened to that? And they're coming for an oil change and I'd tell them, but it was on a car, it wasn't worth it. And then I'd have the neighbors in the estate going, have you painted that? No, I've detailed it. Well, what is detailing? So I'm in the in I was in the industry where no one even knew what the word detailing actually was. So just to let it reorientate yourself, what sort of year is this? So you're running this place as a mechanical place with the occasional bit of detailing. You have people coming over, getting a bit excited by your gloss and that of the cars. And um, this is what year? Two? 2008. So 2008. 2007, 2008, when I think um, that's when forums like yeah. Detailing World just started. So I decided to start my own business, mm -hmm. car related, always had in a... I've always enjoyed detailing, but following on from family, friends, advice of detailing, whatever it was, you know, they didn't always call it, it's not going to make money, I stuck with the servicing. Mm -hmm. But my passion, I'd literally get a car in and I'd end up polishing it for free as part of one of the <laughs> service, just so I got more practice and experimentate. Yeah. And no one's ever going to complain that their car looks nicer. No, I bring mine in for, for many minor services. <laughs> yeah. Just check the tire so, pressure and see you in three days. Just, yeah. I couldn't stop the draw and this. Thing that made me, like I said earlier to you, it made me calm and settled and hum. I just wanted to do that, and it's something I've always been as a child. I like making things nice, um, and a, a draw to it. So, very early on, there's a few cards, but the thing that stuck with me, and it's, it's been on detail in the world, a few of these cards, is a customer local that had, when I met him, he had an Audi A8, thinking that's the only car, and at the time, that was like, wow, an, an expensive Audi, because I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm servicing cars of 500 pounds to sort of two, 3,000 pounds second hand, maybe the odd 5,000 pound car, to suddenly get a car turn up that's nine months old, six months old, and 50,000 pounds, 80,000 pounds, mm. it's a pinch myself moment, because I'm not used to working with cars like that. So we dropped the car off, and he just looked at my own vehicle, and then three was all done. He said, just do what you've done to that. Midway through, he's turned up in a Ferrari. When I heard the Ferrari come down the yard, it was like, I don't know if I've even been near a Ferrari. And he turned up, I heard the noise, but the door's down, he come in, went, wow, the car looks amazing. It's halfway through. Yeah. I've not actually finished, and he's like, that's amazing. So he said, well, look, tell me what day, and I'll swap over. Come look at the next car. And I walked outside, and it's a Ferrari 550 Maranello. That's almost as good as an Audi A8. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Depends how you look at it. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then he did it with a Testarossa, mm -hmm. a 512 TR, and, and it was like, and then he did it with his Rolls Royce Phantom. He's a good customer. Isn't he? And you think about this, I've just been told by f close friends, family, there's no trade in detailing. And I've just had a guy that's turned up and said, this polish you do, whatever this is you do, can you do it to my car? By the time the Testarossa, this car fanatic, mm. I clearly know him well that he is a car collector, when you're going to do very well. So why is that? He said, I can spend five, ten thousand pounds with a Ferrari service, and even if they had, say, an oil leak, mm -hmm. you didn't really notice it, but it's fixed, and you just paid a lot of money for nothing. Well, a 512TR, it, it would have an oil leak. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And he, had, he likes older cars, the classic. So, so he said, everything he had done to his cars would cost a lot of money, and there was no really obvious change. He just Mm. believe them with the invoice that it's been done. You get kind of value add in the visual. And yeah. he turned around and said, he didn't say I'm going to be wealthy, he just, because it's, he doesn't know it, he said you're going to be a very busy man, because I love coming here, and that's when it clicked really quickly, really, I love coming here, because I get excited, and it's like having a new car again. And he went, and he thought, what I was charging back then, which actually was always classed as one of the most expensive in the country, mm. was too cheap, because 
he saw the value in it that he, he was blown away by his car and couldn't wait to get his next car in. And he just turned around and said, I see what I'm paying for. Mm. It's really obvious in your face that it's so much of a transformation, you're going to do very well. So then, of course, that one very good client did end up sending me up friends and they had Ferrari Daytonas, mm -hmm. Lamborghinis. So I haven't even got my sign on the wall outside. We've got supercars. Yeah, I through. haven't yeah. got. I don't even know if I even had, I don't know, I would have had a website built. Um, I probably got a phone line by then, because you know as things are, it takes <laughs> weeks or months for this to happen. Well, also 2009, I mean, you know, it was kind of newfangled. So, for me, I'm standing thinking, and I think at one point it was like a Lamborghini, a, two brand new BMWs, convertibles, and, and a, the Ferrari. And, I, and I'm standing thinking, what's just happened? Mm. And, I, and I have a long joke with the Mac tool man, that obviously used to come to me often for the tools. In 2008, he, he um, knew I was doing this change. He's been seeing me do cars and practicing. He said, you go around all the body shops and mechanics going, who's this guy with a strange name, Kelly, that's gonna, mm. words were, wash a car for 400 pound. And bear in mind, we're talking when no one knew what the industry was, and yeah. it was a, that was a cheap, that was expensive back there, but now that's, that's well, cheap. Now you get the 10,000 pound detail. Yes, yes, of course. So he was joking with me and saying that, they all, he would go around telling everybody about it, and they all went, who's this mad fruitcake? It's mm -hmm. not gonna work. So it was actually very recent when I, I was in America, in Las Vegas working to do with this trade, that he saw my post and said, congratulations mate, you've done really well. And I just put back, not bad for a 400 pound car wash. And, and it, it's just comical because sh um, shallow minds, mm -hmm that don't think out the box, it, it, and I'm not suggesting that I'm a businessman, but it was just, I went and did what I want to do well. And this, this is a recurring theme, we had this with Samir when we went to talk to him, and he said that one thing that's been lost in, in, the, in the growth of the industry is the, the love of the craft itself and the passion for it, and I've met a lot of very kind of experienced old school detailers such as yourself, and they say, look, the first thing you've got to get right is your passion for the job that you do and that there are some very successful detailers commercially, who are, and we were talking about this earlier, who kind of describe themselves more as entrepreneurs because they're good at business, but in the actual kind of the, the process of doing, they might be quite mediocre. Whereas in the same token, you get some very talented detailers who are very, very skilled at their craft, but completely useless at business. I, I hold my hands up in there for when it comes to business. I've got some great examples of when I wanted to lease this building, I didn't know how to do that even though I could take a car apart and completely rebuild it or re restore a house mm -hmm. with my hands. And the landlord said, okay, I need to, what, do you want to be sole trader or, or limited business? It was like, sorry, yeah. what does that mean? You're learning on the fly. And, and then he said, um, you need to get a, a business plan. And I actually didn't know what a business plan was. So they said, so then the landlord said, look, I need you to put a large sum of deposit down because you are a high risk to me. Mm -hmm. So okay. And what I could do is borrow money. Went to the bank. I go to the bank, and the bank went, "We need a, a business, business plan. plan, a business plan." And, I, and I'm like, "What is this business plan? <laughs> what? What?" And I generally am that poor. Not now. I've no. learned. I've learned far more about business than well, craft. Clearly, yeah. yeah. Um, but what I made up for, I think, is again we'll go back to that one client that many years later I've done lots of his cars, but actually he's an estate agent now and I've actually purchased a property from him, so we're very good friends, but chances are that from a client, yeah. how this destiny, the organic growth, that um, loads of times he's spoken to me about it, he said, Kelly, within five minutes of talking to you, I knew my car was in the right place. Yeah. And it's that passion in your eyes, that enthusiasm, um, he said, I trusted you. Hmm. It's something you just get as a vibe straight away. I don't turn it on and off, it's, I am who I am. Um, and that makes up for a lot of flaws in my opinion, my yeah. business. It's I do, second chances in business. Yeah, chances. and I've never, never priced a car, never built this workshop. For the first five years of this company, it's been going for nearly 13, I can assure you, I never thought once about money. Mm -hmm. It was never the business, it was craft. It was, I, I've wasted on an obscene amount of money, learning my craft, learning what was right, what was wrong, the hard way. I've not asked questions, mm -hmm. I've not gone to other people, I've just invested and found out for myself what works, um, which is now paying off now, 
but it was a lot in the early days. Well, the role's been reversed, and thanks to social media and the internet, people can ask those questions. I could back then. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't, you'd have to send a picture. Detail was probably the only social platform, I think, that was around back then. Yeah. That you, and then it's so busy, so much, it was hard to find what you needed to find. Because everybody was in one place. Yeah, in those days, it was more like a Facebook feed and it was yeah. moving so quickly. Yes, absolutely. The um, one thing I just want to point out is that we are both somewhat sweaty. <laughs> And, and the, the reason for it's this gone up. For, it's gone up. <laughs> Crikey Moses. So for me, it's because I'm fat and quite excitable. For Kelly, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why, but it might have something to do with the fact that it's 32 degrees yeah. here and we're in the attic of a unit which is yeah. just directly below the sun. So um, do excuse the... And we've had to turn the aircon off because of the noise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we did do wrestling a bit earlier, so, you know, we're cooking. I want to do a quick fire round. Got it. Don't picture that, it's going to be awful. <laughs> Favourite car of all time? You're a car enthusiast, and I know it's not a question you can answer that easily. Is so hard. Can I do it into cars I've worked on and what I. They're, they're later questions. Favorite oh, car. Oh, money, okay. money no right. object. All right. no, just, just what is the car that you wake up in the morning and you're, you're a little bit excited about? It's probably going to be one of the early Zondas, probably. Okay. Yeah, just because it's just silly. There's yeah. more silly cars now. It's the I think the Zonda, the first Zondas were the first cars to go bonkers, it, the, the hypercar. But they, and, they, and they kept quality, that yes. was a weird thing. It was yes. wacky design, but the actual yeah, the engineering, the engineering, yeah, quality, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's insane. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, interesting, interesting. Instantly, mine's a Subaru Legacy S402. That doesn't surprise me. Yep, six people in your So, if anybody's looking. Um, <laughs> I think everybody would know it's got to be a Subaru, <laughs> wouldn't they? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Proper cars, only proper cars. <laughs> favourite car you've ever detailed, or rather, the favourite detail you've done. Doesn't matter if it's on a Reliant Robin, I imagine it's probably not, because the rocking it always tips over. It's all Again, good. this is probably unfair because we painted it as well, which is in a slightly different reason. So I might give you two answers. Yeah. One that we've painted and detailed is always going to be the Enzo, because it was my. Yes. And that sounds really crazy up in the say now. It was my. When I put the spray booth in, this again shows you good business here. My first ever repaint under the KDS umbrella, technically my first job in the spray booth. It was a carbon fibre Ferrari, Ferrari Enzo. Enzo worth God knows how much at yeah. that point. So it, and that's a customer, by the way, that come to me, we wanted a valet, a, a wash, yeah. and said, I said, I've got an open day coming up. And he said, okay, um, you can have it for the week, um, do an a inspection of it, see what you think it needs. <laughs> I did. Just a full respray. And I ended up, I had it for six months, um, the, the owner of the car has actually got uh, facilities to be able to use another body shop as well, okay. so, and detailers. So again, that just shows with someone meeting me, how it's turned into just being natural and normal mm -hmm. and then passionate about cars and excitable, and, but also realise I know what I'm talking about clearly, yeah. that that wash, valet, we're talking a four, five, maybe six hour job. He said, I'd like to see what you turned into my a respray. A full respray. And obviously wet sand and detail, hence why that really sticks to my mind of a car. And just to clarify, because your family have a big background in paint, so it wasn't like yeah. you just sort of ran <laughs> <the store>. first <laughs> car, I just, I just give it a yeah, whirl. Yeah, true. Get my crayons out. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I've been around. I learned my craft from many, many years ago before detailing, because of all my father, stepfather, all the family, all the into paintwork, yes. Yeah, but they've, they've got body shops. Yeah. They yeah. run body shops, and I've, that's my passion. Yes, uh, detailing wise, just a straight detail. It's, the trouble is, we've done over three and a half thousand cars. Crikey, yeah. Uh, we're talking between 100, depending on that, what year, because obviously I'm my staff, and 250 cars a year. So, um, blimey. I'll, I'm not even sure it's the Veyron, because that's too easy. I'm, I'm trying to think of, do you know what I'm going to say, recent, the Senna. Oh, okay. McLaren. Because, yeah, I'll tell you why. Obviously, I've got my own business now, and I've got many staff, so I don't, as we touched on off camera, that no, I don't, I don't get to get on all the mm. cars, and because of the value of the car, and we was documenting it and filming it, and the client, it's not an open checkbook, but it was doing the best you can. It was me on that car, and I was on that car for many months, or should I say, that car was in here, that centre was in here for many, many months while we did lots of different bespoke things on it. So I got to really, really look at the car, yeah. really look at it. You know, Licking it all over. I literally <laughs> analyse every little bit of it. Um, and then I found out when the car was here, it was one of only three ever made in that particular bare carbon. And it was, I think if I'm right, the option to have no paint 
I know it's not because they like what it's saying, like two hundred thousand pounds. Uh, yes, it costs more to have less. It's kind yeah, of the yeah. Porsche, Porsche yeah. RS way. So probably that, just because I tell you right, how technically difficult a car it is to polish. Yes, there's hardly any flat panels, and that's where you have to get these latest new mini machines out all the time. Mm -hmm. The tiny little one inch and two inch and three inch machines. That's a car you can't just use one machine. Yeah, and you're using extension poles and all the different. You're basically using all your toys, yes. using all your gadgets, so probably that, it's recent and it's so hard, and it's such a hard car to do, and a risk factor. Yeah, that was a slightly scary, scary element. We'll flash some pictures up on the screen of yep. the particular car so you can visualise what we're talking about. Um, another quick fire question, favourite, now this is going to be a really difficult one to ask, but favourite product, so say if you were um, transported into, in a kind of Star Trek style, into a generic car detailing brand, you had a car to detail, and all the products were just generic, straightforward, shampoo is a shampoo, etc, etc, but you had the choice of making one product specific to what you want, what would you beam with you, in a kind of Desert Island Discs luxury kind of way, if you're a Radio 4 fan? So it's not naming a product? It is, yeah, it is oh, naming a okay, product, okay. so just one product, you're doing a full, full detail on a car, and you can only, you get everything's generic. I'm, I'm going to go by what what I know is made the industry better because okay. I think that's just it will tap into people's minds that m m microfiber polishing pads microfiber to me that's made the biggest change and difference to efficiency quality durability and it made polishing very different to what it was when we only had foam pads and some people that back were having wall pads so when that come out, and I didn't sort of get on with it when I first tried yeah. it, like a lot, and then because it was Maguire's, you bought it, yeah, out, isn't it? yeah, yeah. And, and I in the early days, and it didn't work that well with the Orbit machine I was using, mm -hmm. and then other machines, larger throw machines, come along, which didn't say to use a microfiber pad, and I was very early on, I was one of those like experimenters. Yeah, I'm the one that goes out the cave. And the yeah. adventures of understanding the code. <laughs> and I remember my staff at the time saying, What are you doing now? We experiment. I've gone, What if we put that with that? And it was a eureka moment, and we didn't believe it was right. We thought maybe the hardness of the car at the time was the paint and that yeah. was a perfect match for that combo. I got all excited and showed all my staff, Come over here, come over here, look at the finish, look how easy it was. It was like, It can't be real. So then we tried it on another car, and, it worked. and another car, and it was like, this is actually made, obviously we're talking about the combination, it's not fairy, because I am saying a microfiber pad with a 15mm or large throw Orbit DA, mm -hmm. so the two... It's, it's the symbiosis, yeah. which would make someone like Rupert's very happy, because they always talk about the system, Yes, and it's all about the system, so and that yeah. is something that also the, comes up with the, the mic. Yes, yeah, it's the microfiber. For me, for what it's done to this game, and it would be a microfiber pad, is, as is... Yeah, What's well, really annoying is my next question is game-changing products, which you've just answered in one go. <laughs> well, so we're going to go no, over that. I have one very quick answer. On. Wax or ceramic? Ceramic all day for me. Okay. Okay. Interesting. That was that was zero pause on that one. Yeah. Zero. Pause. I've got so many reasons why. So many. But give us give us, give us three reasons. I'm a wax man here, so I'm, I'm, you need to convince me. Our customers are not hobbyists. They are not someone that's going to wash their car at the weekend. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at it as just how we've had a 100% success rate with any person that was unsure. When we said use ceramic, we've said, if you don't like it, we'll remove it and put wax on. Because we've had a few customers, I've contradicted myself, but I have had a couple of customers that have got the boutique, very expensive certificate waxes mm -hmm. that convince it's for that colour car. <laughs> and, and, and then we've gone, let us just put ceramic on this car you just bought. Oh, we've had a 100% success rate where nobody has then said, I didn't like it. So as a business, for the end user, but this is a very biased customer database of the middle-aged businessman with a growing family that's not got the time anymore to look after their car, because a lot of them have followed me 10 years ago in the detailing world, but said, yeah. I can't, I don't have the time now. I want something that's going to be long-lasting with the least amount of maintenance. So it's a very tricky one. That's a quick one for me. And that's it, it works, works. It yeah. works for my business. As a personal choice, what do I like applying? Wax. Every day. Yeah. Do I love the feeling, the connection? You feel interact? Yes. And it doesn't hurt that much if you whip it off quickly. No. 
there's there's no the risk and so we very rarely ever wax a car in here and it is crazy when we do because we forget how nice it is <laughs> it's just heaven so if i was saying to people that want to go to shows and wax their car and look after their car then then it would be wax your car mm. because you wax your car glaze your car and then put some qd on it they feel connected to that car they come emotionally connected it becomes special to them and they feel like they've achieved something more than just a normal car yeah you get connection interaction by touching don't you <laughs> you, you do, you do. You won't go down that no, no. You some detail. <laughs> so the final question of this little uh, interview here, so this is all about yourself, but is I want to know, when you were growing up, so to speak, in the detailing industry, who did you look up to? Because there are plenty of young people out there who look up to you now, but who do you look up to? So I actually was already doing the detail, if you call it. Arcadius existed, the board was up, my website was going. No, sorry, my website wasn't going, but the ball was up and I had these nice cars in here. And I was so caveman-like in that I had never used a computer or a laptop. I mm -hmm. literally didn't know about detailing world or any of this. So it's interesting now, I started this business up just on what I knew of lo and local people were saying, you, you look like you're really good at it. Clients coming in here, with, and actually a guy that was fitting my alarm, that when I said the alarm, said to him, you should go on detailing world. Didn't, never heard of it. Then a friend of mine said, you know, it's a forum. What's the forum? And then you need a laptop. I had never used a PC. Life must have been very different. This is no, 2008, no, no. I mean, I joke about it, but it, easy. Yeah? It was easy, because it was less stressful in a way. There's no disruption. Yeah. I was very man in the shed. I bet when Channel 5 came out in Toronto, <laughs> it was mind -blowing, so, so for me, I actually knew nothing about detailing. Detail as a trade, apart mm. from actually I met my web designer that wanted his car done, I went, I'll build your website. So we started building a website. And I remember, wet sand in the Audi A8 had just been fully repainted, not by me, mm -hmm. and by a friend, someone I know, and I had the car for many weeks. And I was driving his car back to his own house, and um, when I dropped his car off, bear in mind we're talking to as an eight, that I might have only charged 600 pounds for something, because like, it was over a long period of time, as a mm -hmm. filling job. We dropped the car off, and there was a road angel, the old speed camera detector, yeah. on the side. And, I, and he's quite an elderly guy. And I, and I joked and went, why do you need one of those? And he went, it's for you. And I went, what? He said, it's a present. Well, this is £400. It's nearly the entire value of the job. Yeah. And he said, you're too cheap. And I'm not getting that. My wife followed me over. We drove back to my house. It was a Monday, fifth gear, about right. 8 o'clock, 10 past 8. I'm just sitting down to eat my China uh, Indian. Yeah, important details. Yep, and then my phone goes, this customer, watch Fifth Gear, Paul Dalton. Ah. And I, the first thing where I've had people telling me what I do for a living and what it could be, so you imagine I sat down, I'm sitting here, I've just completely sanded and restored a car for £600 and spent months, and then I see this £5,000 car wash. Which you can imagine, there's, there's things not computing correct in my yep. head, but I was fascinated and I was like, wow. And then I saw this really expensive shampoos and these citrus mm -hmm. greasers. Because I was almost still using body shop ways. Yeah. I'm using body shop products and I didn't really know it was called detail. Hence why KDS and Kelly's Celtic, there's no detail mm -hmm. word in there. It's actually Kelly's um, detailed service. But what it was meant to be, I do a really good service of servicing cars and mechanical. It happened to be chance that detailing was a phrase. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's not that way round. So everyone <laughs> says, why is the name? It doesn't make any sense now. So the first ever thing was actually Miracle Detail on fifth gear. Fascinating. So, and then, of course, I can remember coming back in here, Lipson's the next door, the owner there. The next day I'm here, the amount of people that were to come over yeah. and went, did you see last night? Told you. You should, yeah. be, you should have done this years ago for a living. So you have to owe it to TV, yeah. mixed social media, Paul, that whoever come up with the idea and the concept and it's on TV, I think that massively helped me as a person think, blimey, am I too cheap? Yeah. Blimey, this is how far you can go with the top, what you could do with it. And obviously we've surpassed that. Everyone has now. Yeah. In, in so many ways. So that's my first experience of detailing is actually TV by chance a client going, turn the telly over, look what you've just done to my car. And he actually said, you're too cheap. Yeah. 
So, no, well, that's a, that's a hell of a hero to have. And it's, it's great how it all kind of builds in. Because I remember watching that live. I mean, I was probably a little bit younger then because I'm a little bit younger now. And that's normally how the time continuum works. <laughs> um, but I was still, I was pretty amazed then. And, and I was, and still am, just an enthusiast, sort of just sort of rubbing with a, with a, you know, yeah. a, a pad against a, an old Peugeot 306 that then exploded, not because of the polishing contact, <laughs> more to do with the tree. Um, and, and yeah, it was a, a pretty, pretty important yeah. moment. But it's just amazing how when I was, back watching there, probably just picking my nose, sort of so sat on the floor. I've did it from a very different angle, that I've not seen social media or had any connection with detailing. I've done it because I was doing it from a very young age, 18, sanding down cars that my father's painted, his staff mm -hmm. had painted, learning, and my own cars. Yeah. I probably painted about six cars and restored and done cars for magazines, well, for me, but when in magazines and shows. Mm -hmm. I never did it for someone else, it was for me. Then I got bored, I'd sell it, and start a new project and it was just kept me so busy yeah um so i was doing all of this before i realized all this was are out there it was a name for it but it was just that fifth gear thing maybe then start typing and googling mm -hmm. and looking and that's how then i say a customer coming hey, do you know about detail well, no? what's that and so my clients have really helped you yeah yeah that's just by like giving me key pointers and key words to think about whereas nowadays it's common knowledge yeah yeah, indeed. And that just goes to show that actually there's an element of luck in all businesses. So you get the people that... They're at the right time. The yeah, right exactly. Place, yeah. And, and the create, it's all about creating the opportunity for that luck to happen. Anyhow, the temperature here is now 33 <laughs> degrees. It's coming up. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is take a little breather yeah. and we're going to come back and do uh, another chat. And this time it's going to be about the industry at large. Yeah. And uh, we will see you then. Thank you very much for Thank watching. You.